Why is sex so much fun? It's exhausting, messy, and it can be a killer. But without it, almost every species on Earth would be extinct. Sexual reproduction is the way nearly all creatures ensure the future of their species. But sex doesn't just happen. Humans aren't the only ones who need the urge. So what drives animal passions? For some, it's hardwired desire, the simple need to continue their genetic line. For others, it might be a pursuit of pleasure. Physical rewards, like orgasm. Whatever drives the libido, satisfaction comes in all shapes and sizes. Some seek a partner of the same sex. Others gang up to get what they want. And some go solo. A raging libido can turn some creatures into sex-crazed bullies and others into raging nymphomaniacs. A libido starts on the inside with hormones. For females, oestrogen is one of the primary sex hormones. When a female's in oestrus, it usually means she's sexually receptive. And the fact often shows some signs are subtle. Some can be graphic. It's the same with males. As their hormones kick in, there comes a point where sex becomes an obsession. And this is the cause. Testosterone, the most active male hormone, promoting the development of the penis, scrotum and sperm. It's also a mind-altering chemical. <coughs> dramatically changing the way they treat members of the opposite sex. <laughs> However, testosterone is far from just a male preserve. Its impact can be seen in both sexes. Most mammals are relatively helpless at birth. But not these babies. They start life as they mean to go on, teeth bared and biting. Spotted hyena mothers usually have twins, and these infants waste no time. They go straight for each other's throats. The cub who establishes dominance gets more of its mother's milk and with it the chance to grow bigger and stronger than its twin. But having permanently high testosterone levels means more than brutal children. There's a graphic side effect. Female spotted hyenas have a clitoris that looks like a penis. They even give birth through it. Although the birth canal is so narrow, the death rate for the mother and babies is very high. It's thought hyenas developed this way because those with higher male hormone levels were more aggressive and therefore more successful at feeding time. Meal times are a bloody business. Male and female hyenas might share hormones. They don't share food. Sudden surges of testosterone can have equally dramatic effects. This patch of scrub is a stud stamping ground. 
And he's got an audience. As his testosterone levels start to rise, his face and thighs turn bright red. His neck swells like a balloon, and his bellows fill the air. And this is just the warm-up. He drops to his knees, rocks from side to side, and pounds his back with his head. And as he claws the ground to make a rough nest, the females flock to him. When she crouches, he pounces. He places his left foot on the ground, his right on her back, and then mounts her. There's a bit more in it for her than there is for many female birds. Unlike most male birds, ostriches have a penis, and it can measure up to 20 centimeters. He certainly seems to be making his presence felt. She groans and snaps her head during 60 seconds of simmering sex. After it's over, she settles down to lay her eggs. He has other plans. The higher his testosterone levels soar, the redder he gets, and the more aggressively he'll fight to get a harem. The female flocks off, but this redneck's set on stuffing more than just one bird. And his hormone surge means he's ready, willing and able to have sex with up to five females. If he can catch them. Still to come, prowl the plains with three desperate virgins. Untangle the twisted sex life of the European wolf. See how satisfaction is all in a day's work for some non-stop sexual Olympians. And we meet a mole with whole control. The calls of the La Gibbon have been described as some of nature's finest music. Gibbons pair for life. Singing reinforces family bonds and defines their home territory. But it's not all harmony. Human teenagers aren't the only ones whose taste in music changes when they hit puberty. This youngster's pushing the boundaries. He's five years old and his hormones are raging. He's got a new song to sing, and he's turned up the volume. As so often happens, his dad hates the new tunes and lets him know it. Father and son embark on a screeching musical battle. Like the best opera, it's dripping with unrequited sex. The son wants his own space and to spread his genes. The father's threatened by his son's sexuality. If he stays, there's the possibility of more than a family fallout. It could end in inbreeding. The battle's long, loud and lost. As his father rests his voice, his son flees to a new part of the forest. Here, he'll start his own branch of the family tree. But for now, alone and brimming with testosterone, he could end up with more than just time on his hands. <laughs> <laughs> 